Welcome to the Mina Surge podcast, the ultimate source for all things Web3 and fintech related in the Mina region. Powered by Fintech Surge and Future Blockchain Summit, taking place at Dubai Harbor, October 15th through 18th, alongside Expand North Star and in association with Jitex Global. I'm happy to be joined by our partners today from Cointelegraph Mina. Cointelegraph is the leading Web3 publication covering all the latest trends in blockchain, Web3, and fintech for the region. Hi, we're here with uh, Lisa Edwards. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I, w- I would love to introduce you uh, and talk about your your experience and your background, but uh, I think that mm-hmm. the best person to do that would be yourself, considering it's such a diverse and interesting story that you have. Oh, thank you. So, <laughs> yes, basically, I've been trading for longer than 25 years, quite a bit longer, but wow. <laughs> we won't go there. Um, I started trading when I was 16. Uh, I was working at KFC, and um, a guy – from uh, AMP came through. He was driving a really fancy BMW, told me he was an analyst and what he did and vastly different to what uh, an analyst does now because we've got, you know, so many tools and that sort of stuff now. But um, he taught me. He said, oh, you want to know how to do it? I'll teach you how to trade. And um, he did that. And it's it's been something it's been a go-to thing for me throughout my life. Uh, I owned a modeling and casting agency for about 15 years. And um, during that period, I would, you know, if I needed extra income, I needed, you know, some money, I would trade. And when I sold that business, I went solely back into trading as a way of just funding my lifestyle. And um, I'm also a writer and a screenwriter. So trading sort of did that. And, You know, I could see on Twitter that a lot of traders were having a lot of problems. And uh, that's sort of when I got sucked into crypto. (laughs) And essentially, like, I've been in crypto since the beginning, but it's essentially when I had a presence in crypto and uh, started helping people and started, you know, telling them this is not how trading works and (laughs) you're going to get wrecked every time if you do that. Okay. I mean, honestly, your story sounds like something out of a, a LinkedIn post <laughs> that you were working in. <laughs> you said KFC? Yeah, so KFC uh, when I was a 15, 16-year-old. And this good Samaritan just goes around and brings people into his uh, his trading empire, and ever since then, you've been trading successfully. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, you know, it's like 15, as a 15-year-old girl, cute guy drives past in a BMW through the drive through It's like you get chatting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course you do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Great, great. And, and so, I mean, that's even interesting that uh, you were able to say that, you know, crypto, uh, that trading was always your, your fallback, that, you know, whenever you needed extra cash, you would be able to trade and make extra cash. I, I feel like yeah, a lot of, uh, it, it, <laughs> a lot of advisors would kind of advise against that sort of mentality where it was like, <laughs> oh, you need extra money? Just go ahead and trade. <laughs> yeah, no, it's probably, it is a skill that you can do that with though. And it's, it's something that I've like really respected having throughout my life and, and being able to do that because I've never had to worry about, you know, having money or not having money. And, you know, if I'm in a bad relationship, whether I, you know, can leave or I can't leave. And, and that's a big thing for women. So, um, yeah, I, I think. If anyone can, you know, have that as a backup plan, yeah, by all means, go and learn to trade because it's it's essential, in my opinion, right. anyway. Man, it seems like you've uh, you've become your own cash cow. <laughs> yeah. <a> <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's like you can literally, you know, have anything that you want. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I feel like we need to be a little bit careful, you know, telling everybody that everybody can have whatever they want as long as they trade. Cause I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of people with that mentality, you know, might not be as successful as you are. What, you know, what sort of, uh, what's the difference? How is it that you're able to be so confident in, in the trades that you make whenever other people may not have had, uh, as good of luck or as good of fortune as you have? 
Well, you take into account there's there's a lot of training that goes into it. So I mm -hmm. always advocate that, like, you know, if you want to get into trading, do the courses, get the education, start off paper trading before you're actually using real money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of the crypto exchanges have regions where you can do that. So it's it's brilliant. You don't need to have any money going in. And, and then, you know, just get out there and start doing it and trusting and, you know, join groups where you can have like-minded people, discords, yeah. telegrams, you know, jump onto Twitter and, um, you know, you can talk to other traders and see what they're doing and, and bounce those ideas off them. And I think that's the best way of doing it. Yeah. It's not so, just like believing I can do this and just doing it. You've got to actually put the effort and the work in. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess your advice would be invest in your own training first, invest in yourself first, and then you can go ahead and start investing into, you know, the actual market. Yeah. Great, yeah, great. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit more uh, uh, palatable, I suppose, a little bit easier to swallow than uh, than just go out there and trade and make all this money. Everybody can do it. <laughs> Invest in yourself well, no, first. Well, anyone like, can do it. It's uh -huh. just you need to put the hours in. So, For sure. You know, it's, and sometimes people get lucky and then all of a sudden. So usually when um, people come to me for help is when they have been really lucky in trades and then all of a sudden the market turns. And they're like, hang on a sec, this isn't how I thought it was. This has got a pattern or it's got some sort of, you know, thing that's happening. I need to know more. I need to learn more. And and then they sort of, you know, tap, tap, tap. Hey, Lisa, can you help me? For sure. For sure. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely I definitely agree with you. Um, I think that it's a valuable skill that if, if you develop the skill, then it's something that, you know, you can rely on that, you know, regardless of, you know, what your relationship situation is, what your family situation is, you can always yeah. rely on yourself, right? Exactly, exactly. That's great. And I know that you, you, you touched on it just a little bit, uh, but 25 years of trading, what, mm -hmm. what happened when you transitioned into crypto? Or why did well, you transition into crypto? Where did it begin? Well, well I transitioned into crypto because uh, there was just a, it's a lot more volatile um, mm -hmm. and th there's a lot more money to be made. So when I came into crypto, um, I had a fair bit of Bitcoin and um, it I think it went to a thousand dollars. This is way back in like 2013, I think. Uh -huh. And, you know, I was so excited that, you know, Bitcoin had got to a thousand dollars and all of a sudden it, it dropped. And then Mt. Gox, I think, happened and it was just the Wild West. And, you know, there were traders left, right and center not understanding how Bitcoin could go to a thousand dollars and drop back down to like 200. And um, like we're seeing now from 69, we went, you know, under 20. 20, yeah. So, yeah. So it, it's a similar movement every time. And it's just about getting that notion into people's heads and getting that understanding out there. Um, and it was also, it was nice, like, to be one of the only females in the space at that time. And um, it was a very, 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 very male-dominated space. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, we see place, that but... for sure, for sure. And, and, you know, I would like to touch on that, if you don't mind. Uh, with mm -hmm. crypto being, you know, fairly new, you know, it's not quite as, you know, um, indoctrinated as, uh, you know, Wall Street is or, you know, the big banks and you know, it, it is quite a new, young, energetic industry. So, you know, how do you feel about or, or what do you think is the reason why it's a male dominated industry, considering it's still new? It could have started off being 50 50. I think that's uh, I think it's the movie Scarface. It's like first I get the um, first I get the power, then I get the money, then I get the women. I think that's Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that, it's that Scarface mentality. I'm sorry, guys, but it really is. And it's, um, see, men are driven by ego a lot of ego. the time, especially in trades. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, having some women in the space actually balances that out. And it's like they can't sort of, like, come up to you and go, well, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm better than you. It's like, oh, you, you could be, but I'm probably better at something else. And it's like, that's okay. 
And, you know, for a woman, you don't have that that huge big ego like when something goes wrong it's like it's the end of the world whereas i see a lot of the male trainers do Mm -hmm. yeah honestly that that's one of the the most interesting things we had a a conversation with crypto burb not that long ago and he said statistically women are actually better traders than men do because they they do not trade with their emotions they trade with logic and and statistics and studies and they analyze the mm-hmm. data and that's what they go off of. And, and I, I love that that's true because, you know, I think the stigma is that women are the emotional ones and men are more logical and stoic. And when yeah, it comes to trading, this, we're not this, seeing that at all. <laughs> well, this brings me into the movie that I've written that I'm raising NFT uh, money through NFTs uh, to fund it. So essentially, women are emotional about love. And men are emotional about money. So when you marry the two together, you get my movie Coin Runners. So and you get this emotional roller coaster of conflicting emotions in trading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean coin runners. So so um we could get into the movie a little bit later because this is very, very interesting that uh, you're you're actually creating a NFT project in the film industry. And I, I'd love to to touch on that. Um mm-hmm. But but you know as, as we're we're getting into that I, I kind of want to know like what are the challenges you think that that women are having as you said it is a male dominated industry but I feel like that was sort of a that was sort of a benefit for you because they were trading emotionally and you were trading logically and you were kind of yeah. you know winning that game but uh, do you feel like that there's certain challenges that women are facing in this industry considering it is male dominated. Yeah, it's it's hard um, as a woman to sort of because men do have it, ego and you know they get the followers and I I think the right people come and follow me and I'm not saying that I need more followers or anything like that um, but what I'm trying to say is like the ego that drives these men and they see like these huge big personalities and personas driven by ego online. And they start to follow these people and they're, you know, not all of those traders are successful. And I know Crypto Burb's a fabulous trader and I've got nothing against him and I can't say one bad thing against him, actually. But there are other traders out there that do trade very emotionally. And there's a lot of people in general that follow them because of their big personas and their big egos. And they are getting like into bad trades. And it's like. Um, yeah, I wish I wish I could take them all and go slap, 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 you know, wake up, please just, you know, you've got people following you here. Calm it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for, there's certain responsibility, the power comes responsibility, I guess you can say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm and not sure how much they really sort of care about the people following them, you know, what they are doing and, yeah, with their own money. Yeah, you kind of begin to wonder, do they make more money off of their impressions and views on YouTube and Twitter? Do they make their actual money off of trading? Yeah, or or their sign-ups to exchanges and that sort of thing, the affiliate deals that they probably have. Yeah, yeah, it makes total sense. Um, Yeah, and so um, uh, the last question on this topic, because I feel like it's a very interesting topic, and especially um, I feel like the trend in – Know, technology in general is leaning towards this ESG initiative and obviously the S in ESG is a social and we want to make sure that you know as we are promoting technology we're also promoting social justices and equality as well um, how do you think that uh, you know that this entire industry would improve if it had a bigger female representation or do you think that it even needs a bigger female representation is it just the way that it is, or should we encourage more females within the space in order to improve the industry? I think, you know, across any industry, there's, you know, females, males, and they make up sort of certain jobs in any industry. But what I would like to encourage is more females to trade. So, you know, stay at home mums can have their own money. They, you know, they don't feel like they're you know, by staying home, they're losing that sort of independence. Um, Because I do think money is a form of independence. And I think bringing sort of females into that space for that reason, not necessarily, they don't necessarily have to be, you know, the leaders or the thought leaders, but I, I do think women bring 
a different perspective to situations in all on all areas really absolutely absolutely i agree with you you know 100 percent. and so yeah, <laughs> i know that you wanted to talk about your film and i would love to talk about that now so let, let's kind of get into it so i know that you said that you're a screenwriter you came from uh you're having your own modeling agency and mm -hmm. um then you got into crypto and sort of made that your your focus and now you're sort of combining the two passions i guess you're, you're creating an entire nfg nft project in the film industry. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what is this project and how does it involve NFTs and the film industry? Yeah, so um, so I was uh, I ran an agency in the film industry. So it was a modeling casting and promotions agency. So we did film TV um, and modeling and l lots of different things in the entertainment industry. Now, um, from that, so it was a high demand industry and about 15 years in, I was completely burnt out and decided to take a break. And then um, I thought I'm, you know, sold the business, went into writing. And um, at the time I was writing, I was also trading the crypto and uh, sort of, you know, that's kind of where the two passions combined. And um, I went into business with, you know, some other sort of big male dom personalities in the industry and uh, that's where Coin Runners was born just from mm -hmm. you know some issues and problems and the, the roller coaster ride that was you know basically 2016 to 2019 and um, you know how the market just went you know up 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 and then completely crashed and um, you know the fallout behind you know stuff that happened in that and yeah, so it was, that was how the, the film was born. And then, you know, sort of being in this industry and, and seeing like projects come to life and, and what they're trying to do and how they can change an industry and innovate it um, for the better. So basically what Coin Runners does and what we're trying to do with the film is uh, fund the film with NFTs and these NFTs then become um, the the key to holding the profits, um, the profit share of that movie. So, um, and that's all broken down as uh, it is in the normal sort of entertainment industry. But it's done in a streamlined way through the NFTs. And it also makes it a liquid sort of asset where with a normal traditional film investment, it's locked to a contract. You can't on sell that. You can't sort of, um, you know, transfer it to anyone. You are locked into that contract for the two years or whatever it takes to make a film. So with an NFT, you can on sell that. It then also becomes memorabilia after the film is made. And um, the way we've done it is the NFT become a graphic novel of the movie. So the movie will be... Um, filmed with you know actors and and actresses and that sort of thing but the nfts are a, a living sort of graphic novel of the movie moving forward so it's exciting so we we essentially uh disrupt the way that the film industry distributes uh profits and royalties and it's all done through the nfts that's great i mean one of the things that that we enjoy at the future blockchain summit is seeing use cases for crypto seeing use cases for nft beyond just buy it wait until it's more valuable and then sell it but you know there is technology there are use cases and utilities that are available through using nfts and i think that you've just created an amazing use case for nfts so you're actually funding a movie project mm -hmm. i guess the movie happens to be about nfts as well or, or crypto yeah, well, as well. The, about crypto. It's about crypto. So yeah. um, it's about the industry as a whole. So which I, sure. you know, I hope with uh, how the movie is made, and it's it's won twenty three awards for the script. So I'm pretty excited oh, wow. about that. Congratulations, and, that's your script. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So um, so hopefully that entices people to come into the industry as well. Sees how exciting you know it is. They get an understanding of the ups and downs of it. So. You know, they're one step ahead of the people that are just coming in thinking they're going to get rich quickly. And, um, yeah, so, you know, hopefully it's that sort of flywheel effect where, you know, we've got this NFT project where 
disrupting the film industry. We're bringing people into crypto that want to know, and you know that sort of creates that momentum that we can move forward with the industry, and you know a broader audience can see and understand what crypto can do for their business. Yeah, that's great, and and I think one of the things that is super important when we're talking about NFTs and cryptos or, or virtual assets, if you will, is mm-hmm. that that we we find a way to make it accessible and interesting to more audiences. So, you know, there there might be a ton of people that are interested in film and really enjoy everything about the the production and investment and funding and, um, you know, creating a film. And and they've never really considered NFTs before. They they only really understand that NFTs is, you know, kind of these, you know, goofy looking cartoon monkeys that they can't afford anymore. And some people made a lot of money off of it and they don't really understand it. But now all of a sudden they say, hey, look, here's an NFT project about the film or for the film industry that has, you know, X, Y, Z benefits. Uh, mm-hmm. You can, you know, help fund this film that you really enjoy the script. You can fund it. You can trade the uh, the ownership of that as well. You can sell it for more money later. You can use it as memorabilia. You can use it as a song graphic novel. It, it's a lot of different reasons why this NFT might be useful to somebody other than just buying it at a low rate. And hopefully somebody agrees that it's worth more than what you bought it for. And then they'll buy it back from you. Um, yeah, so I, exactly. Yeah, and I think that as uh, as NFTs continue to to uh, you know expand and infiltrate more industries, more uh, audiences, then that, that's going to be huge for you know the uptake of these use cases as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg for NFTs. Like we're going to start to see you know the film industry embrace them more. And I, I think we're going to see the music industry as a whole sort of um, heading down that NFT and that ownership route. So it, it is a big thing for artists to actually own their own work and mm-hmm. have control of that and be able to make the music or the film that they want to make without a studio coming in and saying, no, you've got to do X, Y and Z or else we're not putting it to air. So yeah. this way, you know, we do have we have not only the innovation, but we have creativity that's not getting stifled by big companies yeah absolutely and and it kind of puts a little bit of the power and control and investment into more hands more people can actually get a piece of this action and if they really enjoy an artist they can mm. you know, essentially become partners with the artist you know it's not just exactly. so, giant record levels go ahead yeah so the accessibility of you know that is a major plus in this industry so, you know, I, I, Taylor Swift has um, released some NFTs, I believe. And, you know, but there's been a whole heap of artists this year that have come out with music NFTs. And so you can own, a, a, you know, a small portion of their work in, and receive those royalties for believing in them. And that's essentially what you're saying. It's like, I like your work. I like what you're doing. I'd like to see some more here. I'm going to help you. So, you know, it's taking crowd um funding and crowdsourcing that one step further yeah that's amazing and, and and we love to see these sort of cases at the uh, future blockchain summit and uh can you tell us a little bit about uh how's the film going is it going to be released have you started shooting what's the uh what can we expect no from so it? We're, we're really early days so we're releasing the uh nfts very soon so um we're just working on um, a seamless integration between crypto and credit cards so that, you know, anyone from your mum and dad that knows nothing about crypto can come up and they can buy an NFT with their credit card, goes, creates a wallet for them and, you know, the NFT is stored there. So they'll get an email, they can access that and they can see it all. So um, essentially that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to sort of I think when crypto, when you don't know you're using crypto is when adoption is going to happen. Absolutely. I mean, you, you said uh, the more seamless it is, the, you know, the, the more likely it is that people are going to actually uh, start using it, you know, as long as it mm-hmm. doesn't interfere with their lives, but actually improves their lives, then, then we'll see, hey, I think I'll start using this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I just use crypto. Really? I didn't know that. It's like, yeah. And I think, 
that's going to be the beginning of the next sort of massive bull run that we see when we can get that integration right. For sure. And I mean, I think that my, my example of getting into crypto is uh, very, very similar to what you just described is that I had a friend that said, uh, that owed me a little bit of money and he said, sure. Do you, uh, do you take crypto? At the time it did not, but I was interested. So I was like, I can. <laughs> I mean, let, let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> How do I do it? I opened up a wallet. He transferred me some tether and, uh, ever since then I've had some crypto. <laughs> it's still not something I'm heavily invested into. Uh, you know, I'm not yeah. putting my life savings into it at this moment, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was something that, you know, I didn't go out of my way, but he said, you know, do you accept crypto? And now I became somebody that does accept crypto. <laughs> Yeah, see, so that's the easy, seamless way forward, isn't it? It's like, okay, this is kind of interesting. Let me see how this works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we're definitely excited to see more of a uh, more of your project and see, you know, kind of what stage you're you're in by the time Future Blockchain Summit comes in the fifteenth to eighteenth of October of this year. Mm -hmm. But um, I would love to know a little bit about what you're looking forward to seeing at Future Blockchain Summit. Oh, I've just, I've been reading and there's so much innovation happening and I'm just excited to see all the really new projects, all the new technology. And especially, I know you've got some trading panels and I'm really interested to see some of those. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely bring, uh, you know, the most world class, world, world renowned, uh, influencers from the space, you know, the ones that hopefully you agree are actually trading properly. And, yeah, uh, you know, you've giving got some good advice. <laughs> so, yeah, so you, you can expect to see them. You've got crypto burb. So yeah, some, some really good traders there. Absolutely. We, we do our best for sure. And, and we really do think that this is the best, uh, lineup that you're going to see throughout the entire Middle East, uh, any blockchain or crypto event. Um, basically in the entire GCC and Middle East for sure. Um, so if you don't mind answering a few quick questions we, we tend to ask mm -hmm. these to every uh every guest that comes on this podcast just a, a quick one or two liner um you know so tell us a little bit about what advice would you give to someone just entering the crypto industry um not your keys not your crypto so google that and and understand what that means um i would also say don't write down your passwords or your seed phrases anywhere that you're going to lose it or somebody's going to find it because you'll have no crypto. Um, <laughs> and yeah, basically learn, 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 or you can read everything you can and understand this new technology. It's amazing. Oh, wow. So not your keys, not your crypto. Don't give other people access to your wallet and yep. uh, invest in yourself before you invest into the market. Exactly. <laughs> Sounds good. And, uh, you know, knowing that you've been able to sort of jump from KFC to trading to your own modeling and <laughs> casting agency to NFTs to, you know, creating your own movie. Um, obviously you're, you're extremely enterprising. So what advice would you give to young entrepreneurs, uh, kind of just getting started, you know, in their lives? Um, the one thing that somebody told me when I first started on the journey way back when I was young was you never fail until you stop trying. And, you know, you may have projects that don't go where they're meant to go. Find a way. You know, it may not be the right way. You might be missing something. But, you know, find the right people, find the right, you know, sort of technology that makes your stuff work. And, you know, just never stop trying. Never give up. Never give up. That's great. Yeah, great, never great advice. Up. Great. And then finally, because, you know, you, you have had, you know, quite longevity in trading and in crypto as well. Um, so you've seen, you know, kind of the trends and where it takes the industry. Where do you see mm -hmm. crypto in five years? I see we're very early right now. Um, on the adoption phase, we're just getting the regulations coming in. In five years, I think we're really on that journey to it being that seamless currency that, you know, and we've got adoption. And I think that's starting to happen. I think by sort of, uh, you know, 2030, that's about seven years away. That's where we're going to start seeing, you know, major adoption of cryptocurrency. And, you know, within, we're in, you know, that 40 year band where 
we go into a, a financial rev revolution and that's happening with crypto. And I think crypto is the next financial revolution. That sounds great. It sounds great. And that's what we're hoping it becomes as well. Yeah, we have for sure. <laughs> Fingers crossed you're right. If uh, 2030 comes and <laughs> if it's not, then I'm going to ask you where my money went. <laughs> yeah, you'd be calling up. was like, Lacey, you said 2030. Like, we're, we're, what's I remembered. <laughs> I recorded the podcast. So if you want to play this back, <laughs> whose voice was that? No, I, I think you're absolutely right. And, and that's why we've decided to build this, uh, this event as well. Um, and we're really looking forward to seeing you. Um, once again, 15th to the 18th of October, 2023 at Dubai Harbor. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, everybody's going to get an opportunity to come see you, uh, Lisa Edwards and, you know, listen to this great advice at the Future Blockchain Summit. I'm excited. So yeah, everyone get there to the Future Blockchain Summit. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.